All right, let's do some testing and check out the black Neutrik XLR connectors. They've changed the coating from a black chrome to a KTM coating, which is more like a paint instead of uh, the metallic process. They did this to reduce the toxic chemicals, chromium-6, released into the environment, but no good deed goes unpunished. So the old connectors have this black coating and it's kind of hazy looking and it's a little, if you look inside, you can see that it's shiny. Here's the male and here is the female. We can see the threads are metallic. The new coating has got paint. It's coated all the way through. There's a black coating on the entire connector inside and out. And here's the male to the male. You can see the difference. The nickel or chrome or whatever you want to call it, the silver Neutrik connectors remain unchanged. They're still the same. Now this alteration of the coating has made the outside shell non-conductive. It used to conduct electricity, both the silver ones and the black ones. But now the new ones do not conduct. And we can check that out. And we'll do that. And we have low resistance with the silver ones. And now we'll do the black chrome. Same thing, we've got conductivity. Now we'll go to the new ones. And we got nothing. Okay, so how does this impact us and is it relevant? If you've got a very loud stage and you're not really diving into the noise floor, it's not going to make any difference at all. But there are applications where absolute minimal noise may be desirable or important. So let's take a look at what this does. So I've made two cables here and what I've done is I've connected a white wire to pin one and a green wire to that little metal tab on the inside that goes to the metal shell and allows the conductor to touch. So we can see that here. There's the little metal tab with the green wire and then the white wire is connected to pin one. And this will allow us to ground the shell manually and listen to the difference. All right, so here's one done with the KTM coatings, and here's the exact same thing done with the black chrome coating. And this is a 200 ohm shunt or a 200 ohm uh, load that will stop it from being super noisy so we can actually hear the noise instead of uh, having the mic cord act like an antenna. All right, so let's go ahead and fire this up. So first I'll start with the black chrome, plug that in here, and I'll put the load on there, and we'll make sure that none of these are connected. We are not connecting the shell to anything, and we'll fire that up. Now I've got the board gain up all the way, and I've got the, the gain's at 45 dB on this console, and the trim is at plus 18. So this is a tremendous amount of gain so we can hear what's going on. And we can hear the noise for the console. And look what happens when I touch, when I touch the shell. You hear the microphonics of the cable. Not a lot's going on there. Now, we can hear a lot of hiss, so I've put an EQ where I've boosted everything below 100 hertz and cut everything above 100 hertz. So let's go ahead and turn that EQ on. And now we can focus on just the low frequencies. And you can hear that slight hum coming in, or at least I can. really nothing happening there. Now let's go ahead and connect up the shell.
shell wires. So now the shell will be connected to pin one on both sides, which normally will be happening on the microphone or the uh, other side by whatever piece of gear it's plugged into. Okay, so now we'll show it out. Now we're silent. Everywhere. Cool. Let's do the exact same thing with the KTM coding. And plug the load on. And make sure they're not touching. Oh, let's check it with the EQ off first. We get a little bit there, but we'll find out with the EQ on. short the shell. Normally whatever this female connector is plugged into would short the shell for us. It's connected. And it fixes it here on the female. And we'll short this one here. We still got the hum here. Let's go ahead and short this. It doesn't make any difference on the male connector. We're actually getting a hum by touching the connector on the back of the console with the KTM. Let's go back to the old style. And it's silent. And while we're at it, let's check the chrome or nickel based shells. I'll pull this off. Put the nickel on. Now I was researching this because of the change and Sound Tools uses a lot of Neutrik connectors. I was researching the Ethercon version of it and found that the shell grounding was not as good with the KTM. And then after that, I decided, well, I might as well look into the XLR. I did the other video on the Ethercon version already, and there's a link to that. Uh, but so I wanted to do the XLR and see how that was impacting. So let's fire that up. Quiet and quiet. Cool. All right, well, that's it. The KTM coding may be a little less desirable for environments where noise floor and hum are of the utmost importance and you've got a lot of gain. This may not or probably won't impact you in most scenarios, although if you've got 80 inputs and every one of them is adding a little bit of hum and all that hum is in phase because it's coming from you know, the same sort, it's fairly low frequency. I mean, 60 hertz has got a fairly long wavelength. So it could be cumulative. So it may be a bigger issue than I'm showing here, or it may not. But it's something to consider and look out for. All right, cool.